Welcome back to Arizona, everyone. Hey, we're going to bring you up to speed. We've left the Chiricahuas, and we're now headed west toward the San Pedro River. But I also want to bring you some on-road, maybe behind-the-scenes kind of stuff. Uh, keep in mind, we are running hard 24 hours a day when we take these trips. And one of the things that we try to do, we try to catch up on sleep. So when one of us is driving, the other two are typically going to be crashed out um, or in some cases, we're going to be road spotting for fun stuff that we can take pictures or video of. Uh, Logan, however, will be in the back seat, swapping in and out of taking naps and running his video editing software, trying to keep up with some of the video that we're taking. Um, so you get the idea that we are nonstop. So while we're on our way into San Pedro River, Bugman Steve is reminded of a place called the San Pedro House. And he has been there and figures that it would be a really cool place to make a first stop for the day. All right, guys, our first location on day three. Check it out, man. We're at the San Pedro House. The San Pedro House lies right next to the San Pedro River, a riparian area, which is cool because we got all this neat habitat surrounding us. Now, the history of this house is amazing. This used to be a working cattle ranch and all of the fields, all of the pastures have since begun to transform back to their original means, their, their original look. This property was taken by the BLM through a donation, which is awesome, for education, which makes it even better. That's right what we're into. So we're going to hang out here. We're going to see some sights. We're going to check out a few things, check out this place. Stay with us, man. It's going to be fun in Arizona with the bug man. The Southwest U.S. has the largest variety and biodiversity of pollinators in the country. How cool is that? All right, now that has a lot to do with the fact that they're specialists. A lot of them in that group are specialists, and that has a lot to do with the wide variety of squash that we're seeing all over the region. Everywhere we go, we keep running into different types of squash. Here we are, San Pedro House, and running into squash, just growing. That's kind of cool. Bugman Steve has found vinegar runes on this site. So we begin our first search in the immediate vicinity of the San Pedro house. We quickly realize how dry this environment is. So we detail our search following Steve's lead. Check it out guys. We've got two holes in the ground here. But the difference between these and any other hole in the ground is these have silk over the top. That tells us that there are tarantulas in one or both of these holes. So what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and fish the tarantula out. And the best way to do that is use a piece of grass. Okay, so we're gonna fish down in. And sometimes just moving around the outside edges will trigger reaction from the tarantula. And they won't come out, but they'll come over to investigate. Now the other thing I'm doing is I'm actually feeding this piece of grass down in to the burrow. Oh, oh, he's on it, he's on it, he's on it. There he is, I see him. Here he comes. Look at this tarantula. Wanna use this to pry her? I don't know, if I, want, I just don't wanna hurt her. No. Oh, good lord, look at that. Ooh. Beauteous. Perfect. She's a she. That's a she. Beautiful a she. spider. Woo! Oh, nice one. Okay, guys, so check this out. This is the Arizona blonde tarantula that we just were able to retrieve from her burrow. And it is a her. It's definitely a female. And she is amazing. And she is beautiful. Watch this. We talk about tarantulas being harmless. If I can get her to come this way. Tarantulas are harmless. There's no deadly tarantulas anywhere. Here she comes. There's no deadly tarantulas anywhere in the, on the planet. Tarantulas are not out there biting people and hurting people. They just aren't into that. It's not their thing. She is absolutely gorgeous by far one of the most beautiful tarantulas I've probably ever seen in the US. Notice the first thing she does, she lays right down flat right on my hand. All she's trying to do is get the heat off of my hands. 
there's no bite, there's no running and jumping and screaming and all these things people think are supposed to happen with tarantulas. Guys, this is a wild tarantula, 100%. We just retrieved her from the burrow and here she is lying down and gonna probably fall asleep in my hands because this is what tarantulas do. Not all the things Hollywood tells you are supposed to happen. Such an absolutely beautiful spider. We'll let her walk around a little bit, give you another good look at this spider. Hey, you know what? We're gonna need a name for this spider. So I want everybody to help me out by help picking out a name for this tarantula. She even has a little bit of pink on her pedipalps, which is really classic. Leave it up to a, a girl spider to have a little bit of pink going on. But look at that gorgeous girl. So, okay folks, something I think is really important that we point out. We're not out here to vacuum the forest of all of its creatures. We need very specific things that we use in our educational programs. And a beautiful Arizona blonde tarantula is the perfect thing. That was an absolute number one target for being out here in Arizona. What is in this other tarantula burrow, we don't know. And in fact, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't know if I even care. I got the target that I was looking for. We're gonna go ahead and let this one go. We just don't need more than what we came for. So we're leaving the dryer up at Upland area. And we're dropping in to the riparian zone and there should be hopefully some more water and some moisture and obviously a lot more green. We're seeing a lot more green vegetation. Even the vegetation has changed. So that looks like some kind of willow of sorts. So we didn't see those up on top away from the water. So that gives you an idea how quick their habitat changes when you get to where the water is. So that's why we're down here. So even though we're finding a nice variety of species in and around the San Pedro River, we did also encounter something we weren't expecting with the limited amount of water, red swamp crayfish. Now these are really cool looking crayfish, bright red. And at the same time, we didn't know that all the species of crayfish in Southern Arizona are invasive. So even though these were bad to have around, we still had a ton of fun playing with them. Um, they have an attitude, man. Yo, man, what does this tell you about a flash flood? <laughs> Imagine the amount of water that comes that comes down through here. This little spot, this is crazy. This is like an entire forest of trees piled in one spot. Because some flash flood came down through here and did this. This stinks down here, guys. What is this? What is this ground made of? Do we know? It's probably like a a loamy clay. It's a lot of fish heads. Lots of fish heads. Actually, that butterfly's on it. It doesn't. Bunch of little puddlers down here, but they're so tiny they're hard to see. There's. Bark beetle exit holes. Oh, it's in a garoon. There you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Big one. I too. got it. I got this. Coming to grab it. Close. Getting close. Oh, she's beautiful. Woohoo! Look at that. Nice. Ooh, she already sprayed. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Outstanding. There you go. Good job, Steve. And how cool is this day gonna get? Vinegaroons are known as a whip tail scorpion. And that is the obvious part. Check it out right here. That, which looks like a whip tail, isn't a whip nor is it a tail. It is actually a tube. And that tube feeds into the abdomen and that enables the vinegaroons to release a smell 
like vinegar. Vinegar smell is gonna work as a great chemical defense system. And trust me, animals do not like vinegar. And when that happens, they don't eat the vinegaroons and the vinegaroons get to live another day. Cause all it is guys, it's all about surviving one more day. And that's why these things are out here doing what they do. Totally amazing creatures. So huge, complete difference between yesterday and today. Yesterday, we went looking for expected habitat and didn't find it. And therefore we didn't find the insects or the tiger beetles in that case that we were hoping to. Today we come here and we're questioning what we're gonna find, but we knew the river should have something more than what the dry desert has. So we show up and we find an amazing diversity of habitat. And guess what? That brings an amazing diversity of new creatures and new wildlife that we're finding. And we're just wandering. We're not even really trying hard. We're just wandering up through here, through this creek bed, and we're finding all kinds of cool things, both in the water and along the banks, and even up on the high sides where the floodwaters can't reach. But still, look, green all around me. This is what we came for. We came to find some different habitat and locate different wildlife. So if I had to come down with a disappointment, if you will, because keep in mind, man, we're having a fantastic day. This, this, the San Pedro River bottom is awesome. This whole valley is amazing. It's green, it's lush, it's, it's the exact opposite of what we just spent the first two days in. And I knew there would be some fun things in here, but I was really hoping to see butterflies. Um, I was hoping to see some, some butterflies because I assumed there would be habitat to support them. And what I'm seeing is nice green habitat, but not habitat that supports butterflies. We did see a couple. I think I saw two species of butterflies uh, and they were both puddling and that's, that's expected. They should do that. But again, that lacking of variety of butterflies was kind of surprising to me and sort of a shock. But when you look around and you realize that Arizona has been in a drought for about two years, I would venture to say that there hasn't been enough moisture, enough rainfall to promote the growth and the, the food plant that would then promote the butterflies to move around and range out. So it makes total sense now that I'm here and I see that, that there's not enough food plant to support this huge variety of assumed butterflies. Um, even though we have moisture, we're finding some good stuff. All right, so we are pretty well done here, man. We have come here, we've seen it, we've experienced it. This is an amazing place. The San Pedro River Valley is green and it's got a nice biodiversity, lots of wildlife, lots of insects but we only have so much time in the day. So we have to roll. So we're on our way out of here. Guys, stay with us, because again, it's always a ton of cool bug fun. We decided to meet KC back at San Pedro House in order to get us to Miller Canyon for the night. If you can remember KC Smith, he's our Bugman Arizona Logistics Coordinator and is not only a great guy, but a ton of Arizona knowledge. Simply put, without KC, we couldn't make these trips work efficiently. However, before going up to Miller Canyon, we needed to eat and leave it up to KC. He knew about the Country House restaurant. Highly recommended, the food is great and the staff was a ton of fun. Now fed and watered, we're ready to meet up with the Arizona Bug Club and do some black lighting in Miller Canyon. But the real focus for tonight will be a night hike in Sierra Vista for vinegaroons, man. So be sure and catch up with us on our next Arizona Insect Adventure video and see what Arizona has in store for the bug man. See you then, everybody. Hey folks, be sure you like and subscribe to these videos if you like what you see here, if you're getting entertained, if you're getting some education, that is what I do every single day. So be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom and I truly appreciate it. Thanks.